Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 141 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. But let's get right to it. First email is called, I am interested. Mark, I'm a teenager and recently moved into my mother's house for the first time. She talks about... Uh, socks often about not trusting the government and tries to show me proof for her conspiracies. Some I believe, some I don't, but I don't want to just be told how it is by her, just like she's saying the government does to us. So I've watched some of your clues videos. The flatter theory is something that's beginning to stick with me, but the comment sections are just so riddled with negativity and debunking that it's just confusing me even more. If you even see this, please, can you send me a few videos or channels that I should watch to understand better? Because there are so many on the internet and lots just talk about how you should just believe and not why. Your videos are informative, but there are so many and some of it I can't understand. Some people say I have no common sense. So even if it is painfully obvious what you are saying, I can't get it. One example would be the flight patterns. I just want some information I can understand that isn't riddled with anger or negativity. Thank you, uh, Olivia R. Harris, ninth grader. Uh, yep, yep, yep. I will absolutely send her. Uh, in fact, I have a list just for people like her, and I've not responded to this. So this goes in my to-do pile. Uh, there's, it's called the Flyers Shortlist for New People. And it's a playlist of about as easy to understand videos is, is that are out there, about 20 of them, 20, 25 of them. And I shoot it off to anybody that I can. In fact, you know what? I'm going to pause this just for one second. And you're not going to know the difference. And I'm going to send that to her right now. This one is called Satellites. Hi, Mark. Long time lurker on your channel. And I'm still a closet believer in FE. Being a police lieutenant would mean some likely consequences if I were to come out of the closet, absolutely. After hundreds of hours of videos, I can't recall satellites being addressed. Uh, question, how do you explain satellites? Could our domed world be big enough that satellites can stay up there? Or are even satellites themselves a hoax? I once visited the darkest skies in the east, Cherry Springs State Park in Pennsylvania. I saw what I thought were satellites with my naked eyes. Binoculars showed more of them. I vaguely recall a video about GPS satellites that claimed to be worldwide GPS system is not based on sky or sky-based satellites, but on ground-based transmitters. Seems far-fetched, but I'm looking at whatever evidence I can find, and I'm open-minded. Can you point me to a video that deals with this? Have you dealt with it yourself? Thank you, Rick. Uh, yeah, Rick, we, we've dealt with satellites since really the very beginning, and that's when we first started dealing into you know, the non-secret program called um, high altitude weather balloons by NASA which you know the high altitude weather balloon space program whatever you want to call it I can't remember exactly in fact I, I ran into just coincidentally uh, a guy that I was I was doing an interview with a, a group down in Australia and there was an American physicist there who works on the NASA high altitude balloon program and by that I mean you can, and I can't remember if they use helium or hydrogen because hydrogen has twice the lift of helium. They can lift packages, satellite packages up to four tons, which is 8,000 pounds, which is huge amounts. That's, that's se several cars, big cars or like two trucks. It's, it's incredible. And they launch them from the South and they can, they can, um, monitor their altitude and keep the the balloons in a certain they can keep up there a lot longer than standard weather balloons weather balloons go straight up but if you can get the gas pressure to a certain level you can hover them in a certain at a, at a certain altitude anyway the point is is that if you can launch satellites with balloons at just pennies on the dollar just fractions of pennies on the dollar why would you ever 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 put them up on the top of rockets that wouldn't be cost effective at all, which of course means there's some sort of scam going on because you're charging people a heck of a lot of money to put up their satellites when all you're doing is just attaching them to balloons. And, and Anyway, that's what I would look at first. There's a lot of stuff in there. In fact, just type in, again, if you're going to search for stuff, be literal. Type in flat earth satellites. Uh, every video that I make with, uh, I put flat earth in the title somewhere and it will show up in the search engine if you're specific enough. Anyway, so thank you for that. 
And, and just so you know, yes, I absolutely believe in satellites. I just don't think they were put up there by rockets. Plus, I've looked up there with night vision. That was the other thing I should probably mention to people. Uh, pick up a pair of five-power night vision binoculars. You can pick them up on Amazon. There's several brands that are out there. And look up at the sky and you know get your eyes adjusted and look up at the sky and spend some time staring up there. Yes, you will see what you think are satellites. And all of a sudden, some of the satellites will do some weird stuff. They'll fly off into another direction. They'll stop. They'll make a left-hand turn. They'll go ballistic. Uh, they'll fly in squadrons. This is not what satellites do. So the question is, what's up there? I, I, is, is it all us? Nope. I don't think so. Not, for a long, not by a long shot. Uh, this one's called <clears throat> Suspicious Observers. Are these real images of the sun? Mark, have you viewed the site Sus Suspicious Observers? Patricia. No. Uh, there are several of these out there, but they claim to be showing videos of the sun. I wonder where they're getting these images. If it's from Hubble, NASA, or photos from balloons, I've seen them, and it could all be CGI too. They allegedly can predict solar flares and such, which they also say affects our weather. I used to subscribe, but since my Flat Earth Awakening, I'm very suspicious of sites like this. If and when you have the time, can you send me your take on this or perhaps share it with someone who may know about it? I'll send this to the context I have to ask them as well, and that's from Todd. Um, yeah, Todd, look, when it comes to images from the sun, <coughs> I'm not saying you know the the images aren't real. I mean, there's obviously light up there in the sky, and you can obviously photograph it, and you can zoom in on it. The question is, is that when they zoom in on it, are they adding anything anything else to the image? And we're also talking about an uh, an object that is not 400,000 miles wide; it is less than 50 miles wide. So remember, whatever you're looking at is yeah it, it again the images may be real but the object isn't what they describe it as it's not this massive fiery ball that's 93 million miles away so look at it again and then remember that and see if it changes your pers perspective this one's called fe and church religion mark good evening and great show i was listening to your show and the guest you had on talking about flat earth in the church and religion I would find this to be mainstream religion. I agree with you that all, that churches will have some issues definitely with the Flat Earth Movement. You think it would be the opposite. This, however, shows how far some of the apples have fallen from the tree. Or is it just the illusion that we have been spoon-fed about daily worship? To be honest, I was raised a Lutheran Christian denomination upbringing. I was an altar boy, did Sunday school the whole nine yards. I did not, however, practice currently, and we have went away from the church. I believe they, the churches, are now institutionalized now more than ever, with dollars being their prime motivation. Eh, yeah, tithing is kind of a big deal, because, as you know, God needs money. I'm letting that sink in. Is there a difference between mainstream science, scientism, and religion? I believe they are more closely relative to each other now more than ever. Scientism and religion are one in the same camp. They're just wearing slightly different hats. Yeah, good point. I'd like to think there's an option C is all of this flat earth and what is known on this place we live. I believe is far more spiritual than we know at a far more advanced level even many could imagine. Modern day religions such as Christianity and others have most assuredly adapted some of this information into the religious books and called it their own. The Romans being very clever in the advancement of Christianity, after all, what you can't conquer with an army, why not try the next best thing, a religion or sing singular monotheistic god? It worked out pretty good for them. Scientism wasn't far behind. Unfortunately for some, FE is the wake-up call. And whether we or they like it or not, it may not fit into the puzzle picture we have been presented with both in science and in religion some hold so dear. The real truth can be crushing. Flat Earth is the first level plane of truth. Best regards, Corey. Yep. Thank you, Corey. Well said. This one's called Flat Earth Skype Interview. Hi, Mark. I am in college, and I am doing my fine major project for this i am making a documentary on conspiracy theories and i've frequently come across you and some interviews you have done 
these have been very interesting and useful and I'm hoping it's possible to maybe do a Skype interview or any video platform in the upcoming week or as soon as possible to be able to talk about the theory. This would be very helpful for my project and very much appreciated. And that's from Kylan. I will not give out the last name. And yep, I already did it. It went very well. This one's called Q&A Mars One Project. Hi, Mark. Uh, it has been a while since my last email due to serious family issues, but here is one for your listeners as I would like your opinion and theirs. I was looking at ancient cultures of Earth and realized something as flat earthers, we believe there is more land. Well, maybe they all left and moved on to Antarctica and beyond. So maybe the people chosen for Mars One, Mars One or Mars One? Uh, I don't know. Uh, are get because he did it twice. I, I don't think he would have misspelled Mars, right? Uh, are getting because he spelled it M A R S E. Are getting moved to another piece of land to start over again, like the ancient Egyptians probably did, and they took the technology with them. What do you think? That's from John. Um, don't know. I mean, maybe there's certain people that said, oh, you know, it's going to be like an Elysium, Elysium project where you move all the super rich people off to another land and start over. Maybe, but the problem there is, is you'd have to disappear them. There'd have to be a lot of wealthy, powerful, influential people that disappeared or, you know, fake their death. And I'm sorry, they're not patient. They would, uh, if one goes, I mean, you'd have, and plus they'd want to do it in groups. So you'd have like an entire super, super yacht go down, something along those lines. And we haven't seen any of that, no, nothing even close. So I, I, I believe there's other lands out there. Sure. I just don't think, I think there's rules. I don't think you can go there. It doesn't matter how much money you have, uh, because really what's, what's money to what's dollars to somebody from an advanced technology. It's nothing it means nothing to them. They can, they can literally create money from scratch if, if they had any sort of alchemy process, uh, just creating gold or silver. So don't think so. Don't think so. I, I think it's out there. I just don't think they can go. Moving on. This one's called Strange World 86 is down. Hello, Mark. Not sure if you're aware that Strange World 86 is down. And by that, I mean the video is there, but no sound. All right, I'll take a look. Uh, also noticed a new trend on YouTube. It used to spew more flat earth and other conspiracy videos in autoplay. Rob Skiba, Eric Dubay, Celebrate Truth, and others less known channels. However, recently, unless I watch something from a playlist, autoplay redirects me to videos like why the earth is definitely a lot flat, why we know the megalodon is definitely extinct, other planets maybe aliens, and other nonsense that is uh, that has something in there about space, NASA, Hubble, or billions and billions of years, or evolution, or even all of the above. It's been happening for the past few weeks now uh any hoosies <laughs> that's funny uh that would be all for now enjoy your day respectfully irene uh, and then the rest of it is in russian because this is the belarus spy uh yeah it, the, youtube is doing exactly what they said they were going to do and that's fine with me which is they are going to recommend flat earth less on their, their they've changed their algorithm we we basically overwhelmed the, their algorithm so much it was trending so much that nothing else was really being recommended except for flat earth and remember youtube it is the the, the largest television network in the world and they want to be fair to other people and other people were complaining enough that they're like okay fine we won't recommend flat earth as much and they're not deleting flat earth videos they're just not recommending them as much it's fine because for three years they were so, and we've saturated the, the, the lower tiers. In fact, even some of the upper tiers of media. So don't worry. I mean, it's not going to affect us. We're, we're out there a lot. If you have any doubt, just type in flat earth into any of the search engines and click on news and see what's out there. There's just tons and tons and tons of stories. And three years ago, there weren't. But thank you for that. And I will check Strange World 86. Every once in a while, I'll get a, um, a monetization thing or a, a, a blocked thing and and uh, sometimes when you ask them to remove the song they kill the entire audio so if i have to re-upload 86 again i will because i'm pretty sure i've already uploaded that once and that was a long time ago okay this one's called cruise destination mark quick question is the flat earth 2020 cruise scheduled to go to antarctica as some news reports maintain or is the destination still undetermined and that's from Mara, who is writing a wonderful article, and I'm pretty sure she's writing a book on Flat Earth, and she's an award-winning author, journalist, whatever. I met her at the uh, the Denver conference before I left. 
spend some time with her. So yeah, when it comes to the 2020 cruise, uh, I do I even know it's going to be going out of Miami? No, I do not. If it is leaving out of Miami, it's going to be a Caribbean cruise and it's going to be brief. It is not going to Antarctica. It was just something that a British journalist jumped on. And he says, well, if they're going out in a boat, if flat earthers are all going on a boat, they should look for the end of the earth. And then all of a sudden, it's like they are looking for the ends of the earth. And then next thing you know, it's a 2020 cruise, the ends of the earth. The media just kept going, going, going because nobody checks references anymore. And next thing you know, we had 20 articles. They all said the same thing. And I've been asked that at least 10 times. In different interviews, it's like, oh, tell me about the 2020 cruise. And it's like, no, no. We're, we're the, no. First off, if you're going to leave on a cruise to Antarctica, you're not leaving out of Miami. That's the first thing. Second, you're going to be using an icebreaker uh, because the cruise boats, there's nowhere to stop in Antarctica for a cruise boat. It, it would have to be an expedition and the Antarctic Treaty is in place. And anyone that knows anything about Flat Earth knows about the Antarctic Treaty. This one's called... First photo from space, 1946. Hey, Mark saw the uh, picture attached on this website. Yep, uh, I don't know if you use this in your videos and or research, although I've been I've seen quite a few of your videos on YouTube. Uh, regards, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the first videos of taken from space are very very grainy black and white shots, and that was when we grabbed the. And I don't remember if it was from the Germans. No, it had to have been from us because we we confiscated the V two rocket program. Uh, the entire NASA program is based on the Nazi system that we told we stole we stole the rockets we stole the technology and we stole the scientists that built that technology and we launched up a rocket right away with a camera and took some shots and uh, it showed flat earth from what I could tell this one's called Mark literally called Mark Hello, Mark. It's Julian from New Mexico again. I heard you read my email and I sent you a Q&A today. Pretty cool. After listening to a lot of your email videos, I never thought I would hear one of mine get read. LOL. <laughs> and now he gets another one. Anyway, I know you are a, a very busy man, but I just want to give you the details to this video I mentioned in the first email. It really makes Flat Earth more understandable with the moon, sun, and stars. The guy explained some verses... Oh, some verses in the... Okay, you don't... When you abbreviate verses down to VS, uh, you, it, that means a completely different thing if you play video games. Because that means, like, him, this guy, versus this guy. Don't abbreviate verses. That's what I'm getting at. Just spell it out. Sorry, because you threw me there. In the Bible, that say all the lights above us, sun, moon, etc., are on a wheel. That's why they move so perfect in Earth's foundation. I am not good at explaining things, but it makes so much sense. I'm sure you would like it. I hope you put it on your to-do list. It's called <clears throat> D13 Watchmen, The Greatest Mystery of Earth Revealed. Ezekiel Wheels Unveiled. Have a good day, Mark. I will be listening to your show. And there's my email. And that's from Julian. Thank you, Julian. I will check that out. This one's called Sunbeams Are Raked. Mark, some flat earth folks are saying that because some beams can appear to be raked, that means the sun is small and closer than what we've seen by uh, uh, and been told by popular science. I am thinking that the effect of the raked rays could be due to the atmosphere having a volume and therefore acting like a prism. This may account for the beams of light appearing to be from a much more local source. What say you? <laughs> Lord of the Rings style. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, you could be very right. And that is because the atmosphere is uh, what we're breathing now is just a thin version of water. And we know how uh, water can bend things and splay things out. Yeah, sure. Why not? But I also think the sun is instanced. I do. I think it's a, a localized perspective sun because that's what we do in our simulations. And we've been doing that in our simulations for at least 15 years. So I think it could be either. Uh, although in simulations, there is no official atmosphere, which gets into a whole nother weirder thing, which I, I won't address now. But yeah, yeah, I don't hate it. Don't hate that explanation at all. This one's called Caller Comment About Being at War with Mainstream Science. And there doesn't, hang on, waiting for it to come up. Hey, Mark, the caller who commented on your intro was talking about the scientific method. I believe he was trying to say that it's the scientific method that demonstrates the Earth is not a spinning globe. 
and that therefore we are not at war with it. And that uh, hugs and kisses. That's from D. No, I don't think so. I, I think he was. I think he was saying that because I was using aggressive terms like war, battle, challenge, that uh, he thought that I was using the word we, like the the flat Earth army was challenging. And no, no, saying it from a personal standpoint. No, I'm not going to grab everybody. And everybody knows I want to be a martyr to flat Earth and would love to. Uh, lay down my life for it, but <clears throat> I'm not going to drag anybody else into it with me. Uh, as, as a fellow, um, one of the guys that used to do fireworks with me back in the day, he was my right-hand man. His name was Jeff, good guy. He told me when we were driving a truck, he goes, just so you know, I'm not going to take a bullet for you. <laughs> and I said, good, because I'm not asking you to. Same thing with Flat Earth. You guys can do what you want. Everybody's got their own levels of conviction. Mine tends to be a little higher than most. Okay, this one's called Eric Dubay. That's odd. I don't actually get a, a email titled that. Hi, Mark. This is Mark from Marysville. I heard you comment on Eric Dubay the other night while watching your latest Q&A shows. I was curious because I thought, how can a flat earther think like that? So I sent him a message on Facebook and received an answer. I explained it seemed a shame that he, being almost an authority on the subject of flat earth and believe has not received the proper kudos for it uh, would be labeled authentic. I did not mention you at all. Eric said he believed he had been pigeonholed, not certain what he had meant. He then sent me some material to watch on Zionists of all things and a lengthy film starring Adolf Hitler. <laughs> My stomach turned. Anyway, I thanked him for the info, explained uh, that I was a, Mess a messianic Torah observant Israelite and not by birth and was saddened by this and that was about it i guess you were right mark sad to say yeah well come on and thank you that's from yeah thank you for that and no i'm not kidding eric this is on a matter of public record in fact i've got an email saved you know before his channel was burned down the first time uh he released a video called uh um, Adolf Hitler versus the Jew world order. And he did this in the middle of a whole bunch of flat earth videos. So it was like 20 flat earth videos. Uh, all Jews must die. And then a whole bunch of, of more flat earth videos. And, and I, I've said on air multiple times, I've warning them. It's like, dude, you think they are going to come after you. I mean, this is a, this is a mainstream media world and an alternative media world. Um, and you cannot say things like that anymore. It's 20, well, at the time it was like 2017 to 2018 and he didn't listen and he got burned down and he just keeps, it's like, it's all their fault. They're coming, they're out to get me. It's like, well, don't say hateful things. Uh, it, it, there's a reason why they're called community guideline strikes which is the short version of saying hate speech. You, you can't use hate speech in the mainstream anymore. You just can't. So, yeah, and so it's it's sad to know that you just keep spreading it. It's like, it, you know, so this guy just, the, the short version of that email is this guy writes him and says, oh, yeah, you know, I think you're getting a, a raw deal. And, and Eric says, yeah, let me tell you a few things of why all, all the Jewish people must be exterminated. It's like, wow. And, and again, it throws me, not to dwell on this, but it throws me because he's a yoga teacher in Thailand. You know, the whole Buddhism thing, the whole art of being in touch with the world and the universe. How can you be a, a, a flat earth Nazi yoga teacher, Buddhist no yoga teacher? How? How does that work? That's just a weird combination. <sighs> Moving on. This one's called Nibiru. Hi, Mark. Heard you your Nibiru spiel attached pics from my Nibiru 2010 archive. Yep, I was right there with you, man, in 2010, nine years ago. Uh, anyway, I enjoyed looking into this back in the day. I've mentioned it all meetups due to Nibiru research. I have stumbled across info relating to a non-spinning globe and other perspective anomalies that did not add up if we were living on a globe. Fast forward to 2019, I'm scheduled for the June 2nd SALT and C 27 mile observation. Is that SALT and C or SALT and C? And although now I, un I understand the, the title of the... Um... Oh, anyway, uh, the information I'm getting is that a French documentary team will be present. Person to contact for technical data is Wendell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's SALT and C, but I understand how you pronounced it. That's really interesting because he spelled it SALT and C. 
uh, is Wendell, and that's, uh, yeah, June 2nd. That's coming up. Awesome. I didn't really know that they were doing that with a French documentary team. I love the California. You know, ever since they, they were late to the game, the whole uh, Southern California Flat Earth chapters, and now they're just ripping. They're just ripping through it, and I love uh, Wendell and and uh, Sydney and Nathan and, and Josh and, and all the other people. I, I just can't. I don't want to name right now. Anyway, uh, feel free to call me for all insider info. And that's from Gabriel, Gabriel Sebastian, a.k.a. The Messenger. Cool. Awesome. Really, really groovy. This one is called Curvature Measurement. Hi, Mark. I was never bright in school. <laughs> Great opening line. So uh, there's some self-loathing for you. So if the Earth's circumference is 24,900 miles and a quarter of that is 6,200 miles. If we apply the formula eight inches per mile squared and want to calculate the drop of the segment, I get, no, 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 not, not 6,200 times 6,200 times eight. If I divide those inches in feet and then in miles at 5,280 per, I get 4,892 miles drop, which is more. Nope, nope, nope. Or how much below surface drop straight we would have. It's my reasoning, we cannot have more total drop measured in a quarter of a circle than the radius. Where did I go wrong? Thanks. Okay. Okay. Just don't make it harder than it is. The curvature, mainstream cur curvature of the earth, they say is eight inches per mile squared. And for 500 miles and under, which is almost all of our observations, if, if not 99% of them, uh, eight inches per mile squared works just fine. Um, d don't worry about the circumference and the diameter. Uh, the, the diameter of the earth, you, you got it wrong here. Uh, mainstream says it's about 8,000 miles. It's 7,900 and change. We'll round up to 8,000. And it's easy to remember because it's four times the size of the moon in terms of diameter. So if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, the earth is 8,000 miles wide, right? 2,000, 8,000. And, uh, the curvature of the earth, again, mainstream says is eight inches per mile squared. You're all groovy. Just remember the diameter. Forget about the circumference. The diameter that mainstream says is eight, th roughly 8,000 miles. Close enough. So you can just say 8,000 miles. I'm not going to say 7,950 something or whatever it is. So that's where you went wrong. Moving on. Uh, this one's called Moon Puts Out 20,000 Times More Light Than It Should. Oh, yeah. Hi, Mark. Here is a Lux-based calculation showing that moon is putting out more than 20,000 times more brightness than expected. I've been posting this in all the popular flat earth Facebook groups, but yet to come across any valid debunk. Yeah. All right. Hope you find it interesting. Regards, Ramak, Ramak, uh, not, not going to work here anymore. That's from Office Space. Pop culture reference. That's what I do. When you watch so much media, literally you have a media reference for just about everything. So anyway, I, absolutely right. Uh, the moon is generating massive amounts of light, huge amounts of light, which is amazing for a dull, non-reflective, gray, ashy surface, which was as dark as a freaking crypt when the, um, when the astronauts were on there. If the moon is as glowy as it is from where we are right now, then why didn't the astronauts, weren't they just bathed in light? I mean, from what we're looking at, I mean, the ash up there, whatever, again, because it's like this powdery, ashy surface that's really, really thick. Uh, and we don't, you know, it was interesting. Like, you'd think, by the way, if they're running around on this ashy surface, why didn't they dig down just to, to reveal the rock underneath it? They never did. They never dug a, you never saw them digging a hole to get to the bottom of the ash. You'd think, you know, especially if you're landing a spacecraft on this when that 10,000 foot pounds of thrust was, was blowing all that ash everywhere, supposedly, even though we never ever saw it. Uh, why didn't the thrust blow down and expose the rock that was right beneath it? That's the first thing it would do. I mean, when you go to the beach, I mean, with just a little breath of air, you can blow sand, which was a lot heavier than what they had there. You can blow sand straight down with just a little puff, uh, you know, breath. Why didn't that thrust engine carve a freaking hole to the to the um, to the rock below it? Why, in fact, why wasn't the capsule sitting on rock? Because from a production standpoint, it would have been tricky. You don't want you don't want the, those legs sitting on rock. It you know would have, it looked precarious. So you just cover the whole thing in ash. Production value. Okay. This one's called a question. Hello, Mark. I've received your videos 
sorry, I have reviewed your videos with great interest. I want to pick your brain on something below that I believe hasn't been covered or I didn't recollect properly. You express that GPS is a system created by the U.S. government and therefore the, pract uh, the practices control hides the truth, which with the <laughs> which eventually could create chaos or the power system might collapse. If revealing such a truth is very important to keep by the big boys, then why then countries that are foes of the U.S. don't rush to reveal the truth? Why wouldn't they use this as a tool to shake grounds? I am just challenging the idea that there is a global consent to hide the truth. Is every government in this world on board with the lie? Would love to know your opinion on this. Best regards, Ferris. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. Okay, the here's the big thing there. When it comes to a conspiracy like this, or even even smaller conspiracies, it's called mutually mutual assured destruction, which is we've seen this in movies about crime. It's like if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. That's the sort of logic we've all heard this before in just about every form of media you can think of, which is the the problem just doesn't affect me; it affects you as well. So if you want to rat me out. Oh, well, you know, it's going to, it's going the blow. There's going to be blowback. You're going to catch some of the outrage. And so like the Soviet Union, a perfect example. If the Soviet Union knew there was a fake space program because they were in on it as well, and they accused the Americans of being fake, well, the Soviets faked it too. So then you also have to admit that you faked it. You also lied to your people. Yeah, you can take the shot and, and, um, hope that the American people believe you when you say that the Americans fake the space program, but you have a vested interest in this. You are tied to it. Everybody's tied to the same thing, which is why, again, we see this in, in criminal and in crime stories all over the place. Everyone gets integrated that way. Nobody can rat each other out. Again, the whole taking me down, you know, taking you down with me logic. That's why you can't you can't again it, because we're talking about a conspiracy that's so big it affects you the 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 other one that's that's big is okay let's say there's a chance that society revolts and there you know they run through the streets with pitchforks and torches over this well is your country immune to this if it's not then you're not going to take that chance if society may be turned in upheaval it's going to be it's potentially going to happen everywhere including your country so that's what everyone that's what everyone does it's like oh yeah let's let's rat out the americans let's bring down the american empire well not so fast you can't bring them down and if, and think that you're going to be completely immune to it now if your country was absolutely autonomous and not tied to the world economy in any way yeah maybe maybe but you're gonna roll those dice until that absolutely happens no you're not uh this and the next two emails converting my co-workers to flat earth well, i'll just read the, the first one and it's from uh bill hi mark it's been uh, a battle standing up and challenging any and all to the flat earth reality but finally it's producing fruit and it's growing in my circle of the world i've converted three, five, five of my siblings and currently seven people at the work site. My name is Bill Halley and I'm in, uh, in the Philadelphia Carpenters Union. I live in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. I'm hoping you can recognize this on your show with a picture maybe. I'm on the left with Tommy on, and Jeff on the right. Thanks for all you do and for all you've done so far, Mark. God bless Bill Halley from Delco. Yep, and they're wearing, it's cool, it's a neat uh, Flat Earth shirt, which I've seen in different places. It's the Jack Daniels bottle logo on a black t-shirt, which has been converted all into Flat Earth text. That's very, very cool. So, awesome guys, thank you for that. And I use that as my thumbnail, and I put it in the slideshows now, you'll see it in the, um, in the general slideshows. And uh, I also use it for the thumbnail for, for Strange World 200, which was last night, by the way. Thank you for everybody that called in. And yeah, who go figure. A weekly uh, podcast about Flat Earth, and I just completed 200 shows on Truth Frequency Radio. How very cool is that? And Bill also sent some more images. Uh, him and his family with the, with the NASA Liars shirt and his daughter. Oh, his cute little daughter. That's awesome. And then he also sent a shot. I, I'm punching it up really quick. Of uh, him at the workplace. Yep, with the, the Jack Daniels logo 
and I think it's his son at some sort of museum where they put a flat earth sticker. Yeah, they're doing research flat earth stickers and that's next to what appears to be a Target or Walmart. Nope, it's a Target store and it could be his daughter or wife. Hard to tell. She looks young uh, next to a, <laughs> uh, could be a hospital. I can't tell. And uh, oh, I think it's the wife. And also put it as sticker at a fast food drive through <laughs> He's putting research flatter stickers everywhere at a bank. Oh, my, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. There's some activism for you. Throw in the flatter stickers everywhere. Thank you, uh, uh, Bill. Those are, those are great shots. Very, 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 very cool. You know what? I'm going to save those. And I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I may use some of them, but I really like it. The first one was probably the best. Okay, this one's called FAA Assumes Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Uh, FAA, which stands for Federal uh, Aviation Administration, not only assumes a flat earth coordinate system, but it assumes strange temperature and pressure profiles. Yep. Thank you for that. This one's called The Conspiracy Angle. Mr. Sergeant, I have done some reading and watched several Flat Earth videos and a documentary. I am not familiar with all the details of the FE arguments, but I do have an unscientific question for you. And an ancillary, ancillary? Wow, I never use that word. Ancillary question as well. I am wondering who is at the root of the secret and why would they want to withhold the truth? It seems that the ruse this, hu ruse this huge would be impossible. Uh, but even admitting for possibility, I just can't understand the reason for it. Thank you. And that's from Kim. Uh, by the time I get back to Kim, well, you know, what? I'll respond to it, which is just go into the clues. Uh, the big reason why you would keep this thing hidden uh, is uh, threefold. One is academic, one is economic, and one is religious. Uh, and that is you're talking about upheaval everywhere. Uh, academically, you would have you'd have to rebuild most of the physical sciences from the ground up. Economically, you would have to suspend world trade, you know, world trade for several months before everyone can kind of get a handle on what it means. And of course, the big one is religion, which is you're giving the the five big, you know, five major religious houses all access to information that they would use as leverage against science and mainstream science. And between all those three, three things, you're talking about potential potential chaos. That's the big one. And potential chaos means there could be a disruption in power, in the power structure, and men rarely relinquish power voluntarily. That's the big ones. So, but thank you for that, Kim. And and again, all these, all this, there's so many videos that talk about this, including the flat Earth clues. Revisit the flat Earth clues. We talk, I talk about it in pretty good detail. This one's called YouTube question mark. Mark, have you noticed when you search Flat Earth on YouTube now that real serious videos are extremely hard to find? Now you get tons of debunking videos and pretty much most of them make fun of us. If we are so stupid to believe in Flat Earth, then why are they putting such an effort uh, forth to replace or post so many videos that make us look like a joke? Yeah, absolutely. And that's from Denise. Thank you, Denise. Again, YouTube has helped us for such a long time that it's okay. You know, I, They're not hitting the brakes. They're just taking their foot off the gas. That's all they're doing, and I don't blame them. We, there again, uh, there was a, a Google programmer that came out a couple of years ago, and they asked him what what the algorithm was, and why things were being recommended to us on the on the right hand bar, and out of all the topics he could bring up, he said he mentions flat Earth, and he says, well, if the average new flat earther watches twenty flat Earth videos in a row, what do you think we're going to recommend? I mean, seriously, they look for trends. It's like, wow, these people just keep clicking on more and more Flat Earth videos. And they want you to stay on YouTube for as long as possible. That's what they're going to recommend. This one's called Interested in Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I saw the documentary Behind the Curve on Netflix. While I was watching it, I wondered how Flat Earthers explain tides. I'd like to learn more. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Joe. Tides. Uh, because most people think that it is created by a 2,000 mile wide object, which is a quarter million miles away. No, uh, the, the object itself is only 50 miles away. And because of that, and because it's so small, you're not going to attach a direct electromagnetic uh, gravity force from there, a directional gravitational beam. No, it would be uh, problematic at best. Uh, the tides are controlled from down below. 
uh, from the magical molecular magnetic force called gravity, which is what science says it is. So. This one's called Moon Footage Anomalies. Mark, I'm watching the Jaronism video with Archer Sage from 2017. I made the comment below on the video. Perhaps some of you have answers for me, but as we all know, the entire footage has been faked. It is clear to me that when these truths are exposed, the scientific community will have to admit they've all been duped. Imagine the egos involved. Spend most of your life unwittingly perpetuating the BS will be a humbling experience, and it's not about humiliating anyone because we were all completely fooled as well. It's about coming together as a race and starting over with science, religion, and politics. It's time for the veil to be lifted, and you are all helping to bring this awareness to the surface. Thanks. Regards, Todd, the easy writer. Uh, yeah, let me click on the video real quick. Yeah, it's, it's an older Jaronism video. Um, and he commented, he goes, just for starters, all, all the footage of moon walks could have been other actors and none of the astronauts were even in those suits. Imagine, yeah, of course. Imagine being hooked up to wires and balloons. It would be difficult to stop laughing. They must have taken hundreds of hours of footage and simply edited down to a few minutes that they released to the public. I've always wondered also who was talk taking the pictures of the moon landings and liftoffs. Who was taking the pictures of the ISS in space at 17,000 miles an hour? Give me a break. Whatever is released by NASA, believe not a word. The entire scenario is beyond absurd. Anyone paying attention can see that it was all faked. Still believing this crap means your brain has been baked. I see what you did there. You, you rhymed. Some poetry. That's good. Oh, how many more can we do here? Uh, this one's called Behind the Curve Analysis. Mark, this response is a critique of Behind the Curve by Phuket Word is brilliant and should be watched by all interested in FE. Please share. Yep, Phuket Word uh, did a thing. He did a response video to another guy that's responding to Behind the Curve. It's still trending on Netflix months later. It's still like one of the number one documentaries. It just keeps trending, which is really, really interesting and super embarrassing in, in some ways. <laughs> Because nobody thought, seriously, nobody, nobody does in the documentary world thought it would, it would take off the way it did. And, and if you go to like behindthecurvefilm.com, uh, I don't even know how many, like 28 film festivals. It's doing film festivals this year. It's already been bought and paid for. It's already sold. Why are you guys still doing film festivals? Uh, because people are asking for it in, in eight different countries. Craziness. Uh, this one's called Meetup Promo. Yep, sorry, I couldn't get this one done in time. Uh, it's from Malov. And, and again, if you want me to do a meetup, send it to me way in advance. And I know uh, I, I couldn't do yours before. I've been too busy with conferences. But the next one I absolutely will do. So Malov, if you're listening, uh, definitely send me, um, send me your Meetup Promos. This one's called Flat Earth Questions. Dear Mark Sargent, my name is Cynthia. And I'm currently in my last year of high school and I took a course called Geography 12. We had to do research on the earth and during my research I came upon the flat earth theory. It piqued my interest and upon investigating I came across your YouTube channel and watched many videos. They are fantastic. I just had a question that is more factual than anything. How deep is the earth and how are there still layers like society says? Even if you could give me an estimate I, could gr I would greatly appreciate it. I just want to know the truth. That's from Cynthia. And yeah, how deep is the earth? Uh, no idea since the, um, uh, hopefully she watched the clues where I just talk, it's like, I have no idea because the deepest hole you can ever drill is eight miles. And that was done by the Soviets and the Germans. Uh, if the deepest hole, deepest hole down we ever goes eight miles, then how, how does anybody know how thick it is? Especially when you're talking about the core of the earth. If they say the core of the earth is 4,000 miles to the center and, you know, when they show those wonderful artist cutaways with all the bands, you know, the red and the orange and the yellow and the white at, at 1,000 mile intervals, which make perfect sense. And there's nothing below it. This is, we have absolutely no idea what's down there. And there's no fine print that says that, nope, this is just this complete guess. Then why does everyone believe that's what the core of the earth looks like? The deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles. Sorry, that's my answer. They don't know, and we don't know what's down there below it. I'd love to think there was a subterranean civilization or pockets like a like a hollow earth theory, 
because you can pack a huge civilization in a very small space if you wanted to. Remember, the uh, even our civilization only lives between uh, sea level and 5,000 feet, most of it, and at the water on top of it. We live in a very, very narrow band. So if you had a cave that was 10 miles high, which is the, the max height of most commercial airlines, is that all you need? In fact, that leads to the question. It's like, who says that we're not? We're not living in some sort of subterranean thing with a pretty, pretty ceiling. All right. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Hey, Mark. Thanks for the interview last week. As I've thought about this more, I have a two-part question for you to follow up on. It must be something you've been asked before. Giving the growing interest in flat earth, how come no one has mounted an expedition to Antarctica to somehow prove this? The Antarctic Treaty, that's why. Obviously, the terrain there is difficult, but it seems someone who has was determined to make this happen could do it and possible record footage in order to convince people. Then what would you expect to find at the edge of the known flat earth map? Thanks, uh, Matt Bors, editor of the NIB. Uh, yeah, we'd love to take an expedition, but the Antarctic Treaty is brutal. Absolutely, it is so deep and so convoluted and so expensive. Try it, try it yourself, seriously. Try going to the Antarctic Treaty and looking through the fine print and seeing what it would take for you to launch an expedition. Yeah, the occasional one person can, will say that they use GPS and, you know, circumnavigated or went, well, actually went across it. Yeah, yeah, show me the route and then look at the route on a map and tell me exactly what they did. No, Antarctica is that mystery land where, it, you know, which is populated only by military and military scientists. Plain and simple. The Antarctic Treaty is unbreakable. It's not even up for review until the year 2041. So that's why. Moving on. This one's called Quick Question. It's always darker before the dawn. If the earth is flat and the moon and sun move around the earth like a clock, how do you explain the earth gets darker before dawn? Thanks, Patrick from Australia. I thought that was just a saying. Uh, but even if it's true, even if it does get darker before dawn, remember, this is a display system on the screen. We can do that right now in just about any of our modern tech stuff that we're doing. We can do this. So, again, don't assume that something cannot be faked. That something is not an illusion. That something is not a projection. Don't don't assume that. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more, and then I gotta get back to the book because, as you, some of you guys know, I'm in the middle of writing my second book, and this one's gonna be a lot bigger than Flat Earth Clues. I don't know if I'm gonna do because remember the the Flat Earth Clues book started out as a video series, and then was turned into a book. The transcripts were just turned into a book by a publisher out in London. And this one is going to be more of a tell-all book, which is, okay, this is what's happened since 2015 in the Flat Earth community. And uh, again, because I'm wired in, I know all the fun little details, all the cool little inside stories and how we got here. And uh, that's what this one's going to be about. So the first one was called Flat Earth, The Sky's the Limit. And this one's going to be called Flat Earth, End of the World which is sort of a play on words uh let's see here this one's called uh nope i can't read this one it's kind of a personal one it's by it's by um bill keith and he found uh, but i just want to mention the the summary here which is uh, he found out that i'm going to be on uh, at the take on the world conference I, I initially thought i was going to get the summer completely off and then do the conferences in the fall not the case. So in the end of August, I'm going to be going to take on the world 2019, which is going to be in um, Ohio. Sorry, it's my little whistle sound. All right. A couple more. Yeah, we can do a couple more. Why not? This one's called Panama Canal. Hello, Mark. My name is also Mark from Southern Oregon. I'm a flat earther. I've been studying the subject almost religiously for two years now. Have watched almost all of your content. Most excellent, I must say. <laughs> uh, that's that, that's from Grimly, isn't it? That's the Grimly character from Saturday Night Live. Most excellent, I must say. Uh, played by um, Martin Short, I believe. Uh, one thing I can't seem to figure out, I have a very good understanding of the Flat Earth model. You tend to describe the Earth as a 20,000 mile wide salt lake with islands in the middle we call continents. So if that is the case, then why, when building the Panama Canal, do we see a difference between the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea? In other words... They have locks to raise the ships to a higher level. 
when they dug the canal, shouldn't all the sea waters just flow together and level out? Any videos on the subject or maybe just some feedback would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, Mark P.S. If you answer this on Strange World, can you text me back which episode you answered it on? Uh, two things. First of all, I wouldn't answer this on Strange World. I would answer, answer this on Q&A, which is what I'm doing right now, which is QA 141, which I will let him know. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I was thinking of the P Panama Canal recently because, one, it's one of my favorite... In fact, it's it's a conspiracy that I, I think it's... I've, I was the exclusive on this one, meaning nobody has ever written about Panama Canal as a conspiracy. And, but I kind of talk about it, which is, you know, the very definition of a conspiracy is when three or more people conspire to cover up something. And in this case, Panama Canal, yeah, uh, 6,000 people, better part of 6,000 people died making the Panama Canal because of malaria and yellow fever. And you're saying, well, okay, what's the conspiracy? The conspiracy is that the American government knew full well they were going to die. And they sent them anyway because the French were the ones that started the Panama Canal uh, back in the late 1800s, if I'm not mistaken. And they lost so many people because they didn't even really have bug spray or mosquito netting. And they lost 20,000 guys. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, that's a small war. 20,000 men and so much that the French people started re revolting and, and protesting uh, because all their sons and fathers were dying over here and they gave up and then the Americans came in and finished it. Uh, however, the, the to his point, okay, yeah, the, the Panama Canal, you have to have locks set up because the water is higher on one side than the other side. It's a, it's a lake, saltwater lake on the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the Pacific side and the Caribbean on the Atlantic side. Uh, and the, the big question is why? And in fact, not just on a flat world, but on a globe. And my thought there is because of the underwater conveyor system, the water is being pushed around by the underwater conveyor system, this big circular loop that you're going to have sort of a leaning uh, side which is, which is your, yeah, you're going to have a little bit of an imbalance. Remember, you don't need much of an imbalance, even a couple feet. And all of a sudden the water, you know, is only going to rush in one way, which is interesting. In fact, I was, uh, let me end with this. Cause I know we're going to wrap this thing up here, which is, I thought if, if you really wanted to, I mean, granted the P Panama Canal made a ton of money for the Americans because we ran it down there. It basically turned into the most expensive toll road in the world and we charged all sorts of container ships and military ships. And it is a fantastic military strategic point. And we finally gave it back to the Panamanian people recently. Uh, but what I thought was interesting, that is, if you just took out the, the locks and replaced it with a dam, a shallow dam, you could turn it into a uh, hydroelectric plant, uh, kind of like a waterfall, uh, because the water is you know, pushing one direction. And uh, you could turn it into a... Uh, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't generate as much power, but you could turn it into uh, a power supply. Uh, you know, no no different than like Niagara Falls. You know, a um, uh, turn it into a generator. Yeah, just a thought. Okay, do we have one more? Can we, can I do one more? Yes. Ah, well, you know what? Let's end with this easy one. Okay, it's called Flat Earth. If the Earth is flat, why can you fly straight ahead around the world without seeing the ice wall? Because if the flat Earth was flat you had to fly in a circle to get to your destination. Yeah, okay, there, he's trying to combine two things here. First off, yes, uh, uh, if you're on a globe, there's the big difference. If you're on a globe, you're flying straight, you should come back to the same point if you're just flying straight, yes. On a flat world, you could fly, you could circumnavigate it, and you would know, you would be able to tell the difference because the compass on a flat Earth, the, the North Pole, is the same thing on a globe. Uh, the compass would keep you flying in a certain direction and you would have no idea. And the, the turn would be so gradual, either left or right, you'd never, ever know the difference. However, what he's also asking here <clears throat> is that if you fly in one direction, wouldn't you hit uh, the edge of the earth or the end of the world in this case? A little self-promotion of the book. Yes, you would. Uh, but you would have to bypass the GPS system because the GPS system is going to turn you away and so is the compass. You're never going to make it there. And pl plus, who? nobody's flying out that direction anyway. So the bigger question, which we, we've all heard before, which is, okay, let's say you could get a pilot that would completely bypass the GPS system, ignore the GPS system, ignore the, ignore the compass system, leave from the southern tip of South America and just punch it and go for broke and head out into Antarctica. 
even if you could do that, you're going to run into some military problems because of the Antarctic Treaty. They are going to turn you back. But yes, eventually, yes, all directions. There is no, on a flat world, technically there is no north, south, east, or west. There's just the center, the magnetic north and the center, and then the outer rim or the outer edge. So eventually, yes, if you flew in any direction, you would make it there. Eventually. But you'd have to f find a pilot crazy enough to do it. That was a, uh, a slight little reference to Starship Troopers. Okay, that's it. Anyway, thanks, guys. Uh, let's wrap this one up. Uh, thanks to everybody who wrote in. Remember, you can send your email questions, comments, or troll letters. And, we're, you know, I don't I didn't get any trolls this time. I, I'd, I'd appreciate a few more trolls if you guys are willing. Uh, you can send it to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time... Stay flat.